Hi, I'm Bree Phillips. I'm here with Keith Morganwell and Max Frost. Thank you so much for being here. That's right. Yeah, so we talked to different artists about how they stay well on the road. Touring is yeah. pretty brutal. Yeah. So what are some of your techniques? You know, I think I just generally try to sort of keep an attitude on the road that you're going to have a lot of opportunities to do what you want to do. And you just sort of have to, I don't know, I guess you kind of have to have a lot of compassion for yourself on the road because it is tough and you need to just give yourself breaks. You need to like take those moments before shows or whatever to just kind of like catch your breath, close your eyes, kind of go to your go to your place. Because I think, I think there's kind of two stressful things about being on the road. The one is that is that you're dealing with a whole lot of input. You're dealing with a lot of input of information. The places that you're in are constantly changing. You're meeting a lot of people. It's an extreme amount of like sensory input. And I think the other thing that kind of plays into it is I think any artist has a sense of um, sort of a fear of failure or especially just this idea that the worth of your identity is really tied into what you're doing at the show. Yeah. And I think that it's really important to just kind of like let that exist because I think that's a part of human nature, especially with you know with anything that you do that's going to be there. But I think it's kind of good to try to separate yourself from that as best as you can because I think that at least for me, I've noticed that when I try to take myself too seriously, my anxiety goes through the roof because then I'm thinking that it's this feeling of like that. Oh, well, if this doesn't happen, then I'm worth nothing, or that this is completely useless, or whatever. And I and I think that the more you back out the perspective of trying to create, eventually you realize that any any imagined value for yourself or, or, or will, you, will you mean anything in art, the further you try to back out that scope, the more you realize that it's, it's really subjective and that even the greatest artists of all time right now will be forgotten eventually and that it technically kind of all means nothing, so you just kind of have to enjoy the experience, which I think kind of comes back to why the key to mental wellness is just sort of being present and being being in touch with yourself rather than in touch with the expectations of the world around you. Yeah, wow. That's a great answer. Um, what are some of your favorite self-care techniques? You were mentioning that earlier. Um, you know, I don't know. For me, I have, like, I have actually some tapes that I'll listen to. Because I definitely, like, I hit a point right around the time, about six months after I signed a, a, a record deal, I was, like, really, you know, whacked out state where I would just suddenly like I, I used to be like a super regular pot smoker like I would just do that and it was no problem and I maybe I was sort of medicating some stuff in my life but not really I think I was just kind of a person who liked to smoke a lot of pot and all of a sudden anytime I did it turned into something like oh like it was like I was losing my mind like could not couldn't be around people couldn't so I basically completely stopped because I just started getting these like waves of panic about stuff which is the worst to me there's almost two kinds of anxiety. There's the kind where you know what it's about, like you're nervous or you're anxious about an upcoming event. That makes sense. I think that's pretty normal and healthy and that stuff doesn't bother me. The other kind is the kind where you don't even know what's wrong. You just know that you just feel this sense of just like terror and you can't prescribe what, what it is, which is almost the worst thing because then you can't do anything about it really. So for me, I've, just, I've got these tapes that I listen to by uh, Bella Ruth Napperstack is her name. And so I'll throw those on and just kind of like, they're kind of more meditative exercises and stuff like that. But honestly, truthfully, I, I, uh, I have had the intention of spending more time with work like that than I've actually really gotten done recently. But I think it's definitely something that, you know, there's another app called Headspace that I've heard about. I haven't used it yet, but I know a lot of people especially a lot of people who work in, in this industry who, especially on not the music side, go through some pretty crazy amounts of stress. So I think that they they have to find things like that as a way, as a means to kind of relieve themselves. You know? And one of our values is growth and change. How have you grown and changed as an artist? I guess I've just started to really, I don't know, just see my, I guess I've started to really take comfort in the insignificance of my own existence, you know what I mean? There's almost something really comforting about just being like, I'm just another one of these millions, billions of people that are here, and if you can actually swallow that and actually try to digest that as a truth, I think that you're actually a better off for yourself and for everyone around you, because I think we all operate from this place of like, worrying about our own worth too much, you know?
Thank you so much for your Thanks time. Thanks for your Looking forward to the show. Awesome. <laughs>